The law of constant composition, also called the law of definite proportions, or Proust's law, deals with constant composition of chemical compounds. It states that a particular chemical compound is always composed of the same elements with the same fixed proportions by mass. In other words, based on the law of constant composition or definite proportions for any chemical compound, constituent elements and ratios between their masses in compound are constant and don't change for source of the compound or its method of preparation. For example, the chemical compound sulfuric acid always contains elements hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen with constant ratios between their masses approximately equal to 1 to 16 to 32 for hydrogen to sulfur to oxygen and no sulfuric acid with constituent elements or mass ratios different from these exists. Here, it is good to consider that same elements may produce different chemical compounds, but for any of their compounds, ratios between their masses will be constant. For example, the chemical elements hydrogen and oxygen can produce both the chemical compounds water and hydrogen peroxide with different but constant compositions where their ratio between masses of oxygen to hydrogen is fixed for both of them about 8 to 1 for water and about 16 to 1 for hydrogen peroxide the law of constant composition or definite proportions for today's students might seem as an obvious fact in Poland, in the very definition of a chemical compound and easily demonstrable by chemical formulae. For example, the chemical formula of water is H2O, which shows us that in water there are two hydrogen atoms for each oxygen atom. So in water, we always have hydrogen and oxygen with a fixed mass ratio equal to the ratio between masses of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. While the law of constant composition might look obvious for us, it was novel for its time of proposal. The law of constant composition or definite proportions, also known as Proust's law, is attributed to the French chemist Joseph Proust, at late 18th century, as he showed that copper carbonate, whether natural or artificial, always has the same composition, and also showed that the two oxides of tin and the two sulfides of iron always have the same relative masses of their constituent elements, without any intermediate indeterminate compound. It can be argued that the law of constant composition had precursors and had been noticed or used before its proposal and establishment by Proust. Yet, it was Joseph Proust who through conclusive experimental evidences formulated the law by 1793, published it by 1795 in Spanish journals, and by 1797 in French journals, and also defended the law against opposing chemists, notably the French chemist 
Claude lui Bertone. White Proust proposed that component elements of a chemical compound combine in certain well-defined proportions to form that compound. Bertone opposed and believed in combination by any proportions, where this resulted in a long controversy and hindered immediate general acceptance of Proust's law. The dispute was eventually settled in Proust's favor as Proust's law contributed to John Dalton's atomic theory in 1803 and then was theoretically supported by it, especially with the establishment of the conceptual relationship between Proust's law and Dalton's atomic theory by the Swedish chemist John Jan Berzelius in 1811. In fact, Bertolle had mistaken solutions which have variable composition as chemical compounds. It might also be interesting to know that contemporary with Proust's law was the doctrine of fixed mineral species in French mineralogy defined in terms of fixed crystal form and constant chemical composition. Besides the fact that the law of constant composition contributed to John Dalton's atomic theory, an important step towards modern chemistry, it is basic in chemistry, especially for stoichiometry and analytical chemistry. As students studying stoichiometry or analytical chemistry are well familiar with calculations using constant proportions based on the law of constant composition. It is important to consider that the law of constant composition is not true for all cases. One exception is non-stoichiometric compounds whose elemental composition can vary from sample to sample although generally to a low degree. For example, the ideal formula of iron to oxide is FeO, but many samples of it as a non-stoichiometric compound have the general formula of FeXO with X between 0.84 and 0.95, resulting in variable proportion by mass of iron to oxygen between 2.9 and 3.3. Interestingly, for such non-stoichiometric compounds, not obeying the Proust law, the name Bertholides exists in the honor of the French chemist Claude-Louis Bertholde, who opposed Proust's law. In addition, variations in isotopic abundances due to differences between masses of isotopes can result in variations of elemental composition by mass in compounds, where this is generally more important for lighter elements as they generally have greater relative differences between their isotopic masses. For example, water H2O is a chemical compound of oxygen and hydrogen 1 or protium with a mass ratio of oxygen to hydrogen equal to about 8 to 1. While heavy water D2O is a chemical compound of oxygen and hydrogen 2 or deuterium with a mass ratio of oxygen to hydrogen equal to about uh, 
4 to 1 instead of 8 to 1. So, by change of isotopic abundance of hydrogen from pure protein to pure deuterium, the mass ratio of oxygen to hydrogen will change from about 8 to 1 for H2O to 4 to 1 for pure D2O. As another exception, many natural polymers such as carbohydrates, proteins, and DNA are susceptible to variations in composition and therefore violations of the law of constant composition. Anyway, here we can see that we have a law, the law of constant composition or the law of definite proportions or Proust law. Maybe obvious for us, but novel for its time of proposal, important in advancement and history of chemistry, and also basic in fields such as stoichiometry and analytical chemistry. This is interesting, isn't it?